What's happening? This your boy Lil Pete, man. DSGB. Shout out to Dumb My TV. Y'all know how we rocking. Yeah. What it is, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Dumb My TV. If this is your first time joining into the channel, make sure you turn on that post notification bell button. And make sure you subscribe to the channel. Everybody else, I just need for you to like, comment, and share. Today, we're going to talk about. Black Clown Records up out of Montgomery, Alabama, man. Now, a lot of y'all maybe never heard of Montgomery, Alabama uh, rappers from the Black Clown Records, but I'm going to let you know, man, they had some real talent down there, man, because I know a lot of people ain't never been tapped into that market, man, let alone, you know what I mean, Montgomery, Alabama. But the rap group uh, Dirty Boys, had put together that record label, and it had a whole bunch of cats, man, from uh, Montgomery on the label, and it had a little Burn one, and it had a little Mario, it had uh, Twisted, it had so many cats, man, on the label, man, and them boys was basically TTG, trained to go, and you know they was putting out a lot of music, man. They had this compilation that had them blew up, People was comparing them to, like, down south Georgia boys, Pastor Troy. And, you know, they were sending out their records to everybody because at this time, uh, Dirty Boys had them left Universal and this Universal. Then they went with Rap A Lot. Rap A Lot shot some videos on them. And, you know, they was trying to get Lil Burn one, their little cousin, uh, name popping. So, Lil Burn one got on like two, three videos. You had Mr. Blue came over there and helped out. You had Goldfingers. You had Maximilian. You had everybody, bro. All them niggas was working on uh, putting Mobile, Montgomery, and Birmingham on the map. But mainly Montgomery, you know what I mean? But they represented for the whole gump. And you know what I mean? They was doing shows out there in Dawson. They was doing shows in Lafayette. They was doing shows in Shreveport. They was doing shows in Dallas, Houston, everywhere. And the fucked up thing about it was they had this song. It was called Lovers and Friends. And y'all know Usher and Lil John got but That was their song first song got stolen from them. They was sending the song got. And, you know, it was a little burn one song featuring Dirty, and the song got stolen and went on to sell like four or five million copies. So if y'all want to know what hits they brought out, that was the hit. Black Clown Posse had Lovers and Friends first, but they were sending the uh, tape out everywhere because they was reaching out and touching all the people. They was going to Atlanta. They was doing, like, Daytona, Spring Break. They was doing all the shows, all the conventions, all the promo tours. They would show up, like, 30 deep. And they had this manager, Mike uh, Mike Jackson. They later had to beat him up because he tried to steal 80K from Jay Prince and from them. But... They beat him up outside the club, but them boys rob, like mob up, rob you, beat you up, whatever you want to do at a show. Because, you know, the black clown cats, they were straight out of the streets, and people, like, respected them because they was running with them GDs. You know, Gangster, he was a GD, and if he give a nigga a green light, something was going to happen to him. So nobody wasn't fucking with the Dirty Boys out there in Montgomery, you know what I'm saying? Cause Black Clown ran the whole town and Lil Burn one still got a studio and he's still working on music. But yeah, them boys do shows, you know, like all through the South. But when you come to Mobile, Montgomery, Bessemer, Birmingham, you got to go. Uh, book them boys black clown because you know that's how the show gonna sell out 
They did shows with Alpha Mega, T.I., Blood Raw, Jeezy, anybody that came to uh, Alabama, even Huntsville, you know what I mean? They was rocking out, and they had the game on lock from, like, 2003 to about 2010 because they kept putting out all different independent projects, you know what I mean? They got to do work on a, like, big scale and on a small scale. They got uh, on big videos, half a million dollar videos. They got production from Manny Fresh. And, you know, they just did their thing. They even got on the movie soundtrack. But they hit. Lovers and Friends got stolen, bro. And to this day, you know, Luda ain't never tell nobody how he got that song, but uh, they know they had sent it to uh, them. And, you know, the song got stolen that way. But shout out to Black Clown Records. I heard they was going to make a comeback. It was like eight, nine, ten niggas in the group. And they was like, rock, like run with a mob of people, man. And, you know. They was untouchable, bro. I'm mad that they ain't put out no more music because they was good, bro. They was on compilations, like Midwest soundtracks. You know, they got to work with uh, The Hound, Usual Suspects, uh, Big Mo. You know what I'm saying? They had some good features, bro. You know, they spread their wings out. A little bit, you know what I'm saying? But they could have did a lot more, you know what I mean? They be doing shows with uh, that nigga, uh, what's the nigga name? Uh, he do shows with a lot of niggas out of Mobile, like uh, Last Mr. Biggs, uh, C Now, that's what I'm thinking about, C Now. Uh, Bone Crusher, anybody that's doing crunk music, they pretty much fuck with uh, Black Clown Posse. Black Clown Posse, Black Clown Records, they sold a lot of units. Peace of mind.